Ryan Gaines here for OnePlug Fitness. Today, we're going to talk about is your Apple Watch, Fitbit, or Whoop, whatever the hell that thing is called, are they actually accurate at tracking your calories? Today, we're going to look at the science and figure that out. Before we get into it, I got to write some stuff on the board for you guys. Five minutes later. So, are calorie tracking apps accurate? Well, according to these four studies, they're not at all. So one study by Murakami et al. 2019 compared 12 of the most popular calorie tracking apps and they found that the calorie tracking apps were significantly different than the metabolic chamber, which for you guys that are wondering what the fuck is a metabolic chamber, it's basically where calories are 100% controlled. The researchers are actually feeding the subjects the calories so there's no issues with numbers and everything is 100% controlled. So the calorie tracking apps were way off of actual calorie expenditure. And the worst part is that if you're lean, muscular, and physically fit, the calorie tracking apps were even less accurate as to how much calories you were actually burning. And the thing you guys want to understand is that the more fit you are, the less calories your body burns doing same set activity. This is why like marathon runners, as they run and continuously get better and better, they burn less and less calories because they're getting fitter which is a byproduct of exercising, which is what you want to happen because you want to get fitter, you want to get faster, and you want to get better and better. So it makes sense that your body's going to burn less calories doing the same set activity as you get fitter over time. Now, I know you guys are probably wondering, but Myron, what about, uh, you know, recovery in between workouts? Is it accurate for that? No, it's fucking not. I'm going to tell you why right now. So these three studies, Flat, Fem et al., and D. Oliveira, found that heart rate variability tracking was very inaccurate and assessing if someone was recovered in between training bouts, okay? And as a matter of fact, D'Alavera found slight strength decreases when using heart rate variability to determine when the athlete should go back to train again. Now, I do wanna say that it was not statistically significant, but there were strength gains, though they were minor. Them et al. 2019 concluded, we can currently not support the use of HRV to accurately quantify recovery demands following distinct strength loading patterns okay so guys what are the takeaways here takeaway one don't focus on calories burned from exercise rather focus on what you can control versus calories consumed from foods and if your goal is fat loss make sure you're eating in a calorie deficit as we've discussed before that is the bottom line in any fat loss protocol and when you are exercising don't follow what the tracking apps tell you as far as you burn this many calories from exercising, you now earned yourself an extra 500 or 1,000 calories. I can speak from experience, seeing this anecdotally with my clients, that the app will tell them that they earned an extra 500 calories, but we stick with the numbers that I give them and they continue to lose weight. Had they followed what the app said and eaten the amount of calories that the app prescribed, they would have probably done that uh, multiple days where they exercise per week, thus putting them in a calorie surplus balance for the week and the fat loss would halt. So it's no mistake how a lot of people that use these calorie tracking apps actually have issues losing weight because they're following what the tracking app is telling them as far as calorie expenditure, thinking they can eat more, they eat more, and then they inadvertently put themselves in a calorie surplus. And there's a bunch of studies out there that show that most people are inaccurate with tracking their calories in the first place. So you can see how this is a recipe for disaster for people to lose body fat. Takeaway two, Keep your deliberate and non-deliberate exercise as consistent as possible along with your caloric intake so that you can measure trends, guys, okay? Keeping things consistent makes it easier for you to go back to the drawing board when you make mistakes and figure out where you fucked up, correct that fuck up, and then continue down the path of fucking gains. So, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.